then we will move to item D, which is um, report on the Tom High School ACT results. <clears throat> I know we have some new board members, and I'm assuming that all the board members know what the ACT test is and who takes the ACT test, so we don't have to go through the summary of that. That's good. And that will make this even quicker for me. Um, what you have in front of you is a series of graphs. Um, the ACT test is taken in um, normally junior year or senior year of students. And what we do is we get a composite results back. The first uh, graph that you have there shows how our composite test scores have been over the last five years. Um, you can see that we consistently fall slightly below the state average, with that exception of the class of 2010 there was above our state, state average. Um, but the linear line there shows that our test scores are increasing. Um, we are averaging roughly about 130 students a class average that are taking this. So our, our scores are going up, which is good, but still not at the rate we'd like. English is a very similar graph, as you can see. Um, scores going up, but still not at the rate that we would like. Still falling, falling behind the state average. Same thing with math and reading. I'm assuming you had the chance to see these ahead of time and look at them. So. Um, <clears throat> but we consistently still fall behind our state average, as well as with science. However, the gap with science tends to be a little less. Okay. So when we look at our test scores, um, those graphs basically just say how we've done compared to the state, how we're doing over time. But the next graph is the one that I think shows um, how we're doing in, in preparing kids for college and career readiness. You know, it, this clearly shows that students that are taking that English composition and, and social science areas, we are excelling it. We are above the state average um, for that. So our students, we need to celebrate that. But the other areas, we have to ask the questions why we're not there. And when talking with Mr. Haig, um, we have raised the questions, how do we or what do we do to raise the district average? And how do we get above the state average? And what do we need to do to get our students um, test to achieve higher and be better prepared for college. It all comes down to uh, deeper learning and r more rigorous classwork. It's not necessarily taking more classes but changing uh, what is being taught in those coursework. Uh, ACT research has shown that it's rigor in the coursework rather than simple number of courses that makes a difference on the ACT performance and also on the college readiness and career readiness. So students that take that minimum level of Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and Geometry score significantly higher than those students that have less than three years of math. So we need to encourage students to take the upper level math and also look at areas that we need to improve the rigor in those upper level courses, such as our AP Calculus course that we're looking at. Same thing applies with science, looking at biology chemistry combination with the physics, students will definitely score significantly higher. Last month I was here and we were talking about physical science as our freshman requirement. There is a possibility that we need to look at the resequencing of our high school courses to get that rigor down into freshman year. So when looking at this, uh, roughly, you speak up anytime you want. Yeah, let's <laughs> be go. Um, a simple action plan in, in the short time that David and I have had a chance to look this over, we want to explore the sequencing of our science courses. We're kind of holding on that because next year, the next generation science standards will be coming out. So we also want to make sure that what we do for AP is also in line with the next generation of science standards. I'm pretty confident that would be, but I want to look at both of those before we make a huge major change in that. Our AP Calculus curriculum, when we look at where our students are at with that on some other graphs that we've looked at, we need to look at the rigor in that course to make sure that that's up to where it needs to be and students are getting what they need to be able to be successful on that AP exam. Um, and also looking at the possibility of uh, a, looking at the Explore test in 8th grade and the Plan test in 10th grade, which also coincides with ACT. Explore just helps them plan for high school courses plan would then help them plan for what they want to do outside of um, high school. And so looking at that and then just encouraging students to possibly um, take more of the stringent courses and then make sure that those courses have the rigor that is necessary. So, any questions? I have a question. Um, how does this compare across the nation? Do, 
do you have um, information or are you able to get the information for just nationwide? Do they have a composite score to compare? I'm just curious to see where, where does Wisconsin, I mean we compare ourselves to the state, but how does that compare to the other 49 states? Wisconsin is generally above average for the, for the national average, um, and so you know, we, we could get the data and put them up against the national average and it would just, it would, it would show, it would make us look a little bit better than if we looked at, at ourselves against the state average because Wisconsin performs consistently better than the national average in almost all, all categories. Um, so in that respect, yeah, we're, we're doing good. I guess Barb and I looked at the data quick and we have some, we have more questions than answers. And so our, our action plan at this point is to pull the, the staff together and say, all right, these are the questions that we have where can we find some answers? And one of the, the, the topics that Barb alluded to is with AP calculus. You know, our, our simple logic and what the data will tell you is that the, the higher level uh, math class or science class or any other class for that matter that the kid achieves, um, the higher their score should be on the ACT. And we, we have the reverse trend in, in one area. Um, and so that, that sends up some red flags to me right away. We talked about it and it, it, we have questions. We don't know what the cause of that is, but that's what we need to pull the team together and say, hey, let's put our heads together and figure this out. We might have some theories that we're gonna have to do some investigation on. But um, So in the, the, the short term, Barb and I are gonna be going to a, uh, a workshop sponsored by ACT that is focused on college and career readiness with the entire math team from the high school. And we're going to dig into that because we know that uh, when you have a, a question like that, it's often not a simple answer about one course or one teacher. It's about how everything sequences together and how we have vertical alignment. Um, we'll, as we move forward with science and, and sequencing their curriculum, we'll have that same conversation um, about the indicators. One of the, the, the cool things about the plan and the explore is this data we get now for the kids who took the test a year ago. And it's not incredibly useful to us to impact getting these kids ready. We, we still have them for senior year, some of them. Uh, others didn't take it until they were seniors, but there's not a lot we can do once once we're to this point. It's, all right, we're gonna pat ourselves on the back where we did well, we're gonna say, eh, where we didn't, and we move forward. With the, the plan and the explore at the eighth grade and at the 10th grade reverse, it's explore at the eighth grade and plan at the 10th grade. Um, not only do we get more immediate data and feedback that we can use from an instructional, instructional perspective, but the students and the families get an individualized instructional report so they know where they're strong, where it looks like they're going to be ready for college and career on the indicators, and where they need to do some work. And so it becomes a, a much more proactive experience for us in, in preparing kids rather than, I look at this as an autopsy that's done. There's not a whole lot we can do to, to change it. Where I'd rather be is the, uh, you know, some of you are have family in the medical field, but we'd rather be on the preventive side, being able to diagnose a problem earlier and working to correct it much, much sooner. Is it possible to talk with the student? I suppose you can't, they can't share information about what was on the test, but um, it's, uh, some of the questions I asked, it seemed like the testing, if you're in more advanced classes, when you take the ACT, the math and sciences are more at a middle of the road level, and maybe you took that class a few years ago, and you're already in a, you know, farther advanced, and so then it's coming back to that information that you haven't used for a while. Um, it's, I, I, I've heard that too, um, that I think that, that might be part of it for a small population, but again, if we're looking at the data from the state and the data from the nation, the trend is kids who get to AP Calculus jump, and not just a small jump, it's about two points. Their average uh, goes from 22 to 24, and we're seeing the opposite, almost a two-point jump down. Um, so it tells me there's something bigger at play there, and that we've got to to tease out a little bit more and explore. Um, can I ask, the last, that slide up there, now how, were you able to gather that data from uh, incoming students into college? Is that how you got that? It, where they placed, that. just, okay, yeah. yeah. Where they placed in the college framework. Right, and, and they do it, it's, it's a literal number, it's not, a, sometimes you, they'll have done research 20 years ago and tried to sort of figure out what it might be magically now. Uh, but what the ACT does is as the kids move into college, mm -hmm. they're literally asking the colleges four years, two years, 
uh, what percentage of these kids, because they have the information on student ID numbers and where they were at with their ACT scores, mm -hmm. had to take remedial math, science, English, etc. So it's it's literally were they prepared for, for this level of work mm -hmm. or weren't they? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where those metrics come from and they're renewed each and every year. So I, again, I think to, to focus it is we're doing really quite well in English and really quite well in social studies. Uh, we're not too far off in science and we've got a little bit more work to do in math, but it's we're, we're not peculiar by any means. This, this is the work that needs to happen at schools all across the state, all across the nation. I'm wondering as a benchmark, do you happen to know what the average ACT math and English is for University of Wisconsin? I have that in a different report. It's about 100 pages long, but I can pull some of that. And ah, it's a good time. Yeah. Um, and and well, it's a cool report that, again, uh, the UW system, in collaboration with ACT, prepares for us and has all of our kids. So that the last report would have been the seniors from two years ago, what school they went to, what their scores were, um, how they fared their freshman year. It's quite a detailed report that, that Cindy gets a copy of as well, but that, uh, uh, again, ought to help us inform what we're doing and how we're building that vertical uh, alignment to make sure the kids, when they leave us, have all the options on the table that, that, that are possible, whether that's four-year, two-year military workforce. You know, I think that's, that's the goal of the comprehensive high school today is to make sure you have options when you leave us and that you're successfully prepared to move on to whatever it is that you're going to next. And you know, I'm going to step on my soapbox here quick. If we've got 40 to 50 percent of our kids who leave Toma High School and go directly to a two-year or four-year school, and that's what it is, navigate somewhere between 40 and 50 percent, we should be aiming that at least 40 to 50 percent of our kids not only took the ACT, but are showing that they're ready for the work that they're going on to, to succeed in. And I, again, I would lay out the same, throw the same gauntlet down when we talk about advanced placement. If that's one of the, the best measures we have to know kids are ready for college level work is they complete college level work in high school. If forty percent of our kids are going to college, forty percent of our kids ought to be involved in advanced placement and taking and passing the AP test. Yeah. And I might add too that I had the opportunity to talk to Tony Evers at the superintendent's conference and he talked about this idea too that the majority of our kids should be getting college credit while they're still in high school um, and it doesn't have to be just AP but the idea of articulated or transcripted courses with the technical colleges so that's an area that we need to work on and that student information system that number that kids get while they're at Toma High School follows them to All their colleges through. so that we're doing a better job of being able to look at that data and see how well our students are prepared and also, um, Mr. Evers, as state superintendent, I believe is going to be recommending that the ACT is given as the sophomore test. Mm -hmm. So the concern that Mr. Hay has shared about right now that test being more of a, uh, what does it, yes, an autopsy rather than preventative. No, if we, <laughs> if, we are, if we have those results at the end of their sophomore year, that gives us time to provide them with with assistance. So the state assessment system is being looked at very closely as well to align more with preparing kids for college career readiness. Barb found the numbers we're asking for. She has the big report here in front of mm -hmm. right. Average go ahead. Average ACT for Madison our students was twenty eight and uh, overall the state average is twenty seven point five. And then we have them for the rest of the school schools here. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, any other questions? Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.